You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians and individuals in the pet industry from across the nation answering pet questions. Bark and Wag podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com. Please remember to subscribe to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk, and I'm your host, Polly Requa. Today, we're talking to Dr. Susan McMillan, owner of vet to pet Mobile Veterinarian Service in Burlington, Vermont, about IVDD. What is IVDD? And if you can actually pronounce it, I'll give you a star today. (laughs) Okay. Let me give it a try. So welcome, Susan. Hi, Polly. Um, So IVDD is inter- vertebral disc disease. So inter obviously means between. So it's a problem between the discs. And we it's, we see it most commonly, kind of the classic case is that long-backed dog, the dachshund. Okay. Uh, okay. Yep. So we obviously have a pug and our old next door neighbor had a French bulldog and she had to put down her dog because of IVDD and I had never heard of it. Yeah, it's um it's definitely more common in certain breeds, but it's a fairly common problem. Uh, we see it depending on the breed of dog, it can actually happen in young and middle-aged dogs. In bigger dogs, it definitely happens when they're older. It's not uncommon. The discs between our vertebral are made out of kind of a gel or watery substance surround, surrounded by kind of a ligament. And it's the pe- it's like a little pad or cushion in, in between each um, vertebrae. And, you know, when people say, oh, I got a bad back or I blew a disc in my back, that's exactly what happens to people. And a, a similar thing happens to dogs. Those little discs don't have a very good blood supply. So... They can, with age or with certain breeds, they can just become kind of uh, less healthy. And with a bad injury or being overweight or maybe just a predisposition, that disc can kind of um, extrude out and it starts putting pressure on the spine and it causes some pretty significant pain and disability. And so what are some of the symptoms? Um, They can be really mild. Your dog might just have back pain. And the most common place would be um, kind of mid-back between like the 10th or 11th thoracic vertebrae, which those are the ones attached to your ribs. And then the lumbar vertebrae are just past the ribs. So that kind of middle area of the back seems to be the way most common place that you get an injury. So in your dog, you might, it might be as simple as just pain, that you might see a little change in their gait. You know, maybe they drag a foot or they have a lameness. Um, they might be just hesitant to jump up or jump off things. Uh, they may just kind of act anxious and that's a sign of them having pain. And you can see all the way down to being actually paralyzed in the back end where they literally can't get up or won't get up or are really dragging their back legs. They might just walk like they're drunk, or we call it ataxia, but the hind end might just look real wobbly, or they might even just have a real hunched up back, like something really hurts and they're protecting it. Hmm. And so is this something that happens over time, or is it something that, for example, I'm on certain pug Facebook social media sites and some of pugs have gotten in and I just was wondering if that's something that's genetic or is it something that Chuck would all of a sudden just jump off the couch and all of a sudden he's got well it can be both sometimes in the bigger large breed dogs it just happens over time and so you may not see any sudden change they'll just you know and it's one of those things we write off as the dog's getting old he probably has arthritis he's slowing down And those changes will be gradual. That's one type of intervertebral disc disease. Another type can be way more acute or sudden in onset. And that you might see more likely in the pugs and the dachshunds and the shih tzus and the smaller dogs. 
and those actually I was concentrating on where the disc was. It can also happen in the neck for sure, but those dogs might be more suddenly lame or sore or unable to jump because it can happen literally from them jumping out of the car or jumping off the couch. It can be an acute injury and you'll see a sudden change. Um, obviously, those are more startling and you really do want to get to the vet because there are treatments that can help, but the sooner you get started and the sooner you recognize that it's a significant issue, the better off your dog's going to be. Yeah, so, uh, and then what, what will the vet do? Like steroids or surgery or what? Right, so to start with, they'll do a really good physical exam. They'll, they'll know how old your pet is and what breed he is, so they'll know if it's likely that it's a disc problem. They'll do a neurological exam and a physical exam, and then there are treatments that are all the way from just oral medication like steroids all the way through to really pretty complicated surgeries. Mm. And some of that will depend on you, but some of it will depend on the injury. You know, the milder, more subtle cases, oh, and I kind of bypassed, besides doing a physical exam, your vet may want to at least take an x-ray and if they suspect a significant problem they'll probably talk to you about either doing a myelogram or an MRI which obviously both of those are more significant imaging studies that but they're available these days to people all over the country it used to be that you could only get something like that that done at a vet school but now you can really have those in-depth diagnostics done in a lot of places around the country and can the dog be paralyzed yeah the dog can absolutely be paralyzed if the if the disc injury if the disease is bad enough it will compress the spine and it can cause paralysis those cases obviously need to be addressed really quickly your pet if it's in the worst case it's very painful mm. um, but your animal won't have any deep pain in their rear legs because the spine will be cut off basically um, they may lose urinary and fecal continence so they may be incontinent if your animal is peeing around the house and dragging his back legs or hasn't doesn't have any control over when he poops you have a significant problem and that's probably going to be a surgical issue but there are option there are other options more and more in the easier cases we use steroids um, muscle relaxants non-steroidals and some other medication just to ease the pain and then we treat the animal by doing really really conservative cage rest like literally your animal does not leave his kennel except to walk on a leash out to pee no stairs no steps no jumping and with extended cage rest and steroids and some treatment you can actually you know get them back mm -hmm. you, you know that once it's happened your pet is going to be prone to it it can easily happen again you know, your pet may all, you never do stairs again. And your pet, if they're overweight, I know I always harp on this, but <laughs> if your pet's overweight, getting weight off of them will drastically make their prognosis better. But there are other treatments also. And, you know, you should always find a vet who you feel comfortable with if they are willing to seek out alternative treatments. Um, laser, acupuncture, there's some stem cell therapies. There's other treatments out there that may be able to help your pet if they have this problem. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Those are great tips. And uh, it's such a interesting topic. I didn't even know about it. Yeah, it's um, it can be really devastating. So I don't want to miss the chance to say that if your pet is one of those breeds that's prone to it, I'll, I'll say it again, good daily exercise and weight control are probably your best preventative measures to, to prevent all kinds of problems, including disc disease. Well, thank you very much for being on the podcast today, and we look forward to having you back. You're welcome, Polly. It's always fun. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com, to your friends and other pet owners. 
Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at BarkAndWag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.